Hey everybody, welcome into Wager Talk TV. I'm Tony Mejia from sportsmemo.com and we've come to the conclusion of the 2024 Olympics and it ends with the United States women looking to make history with an eighth consecutive gold medal and they'll do so against host France. Couldn't write up a better script there. The game will be played at 9.30 a.m. Uh, and will be uh, shown here in the United States on NBC. So get your breakfast ready and get ready to root on the United States. If you're uh, in another country, well, root on who you want. Uh, but it's going to be a fun one, uh, at least early on, because the environment should be absolutely great in Paris, where France will have a decided advantage uh, and look to take advantage of that, uh, as they have done all tournament long to get to this point. And uh, currently, they opened as a 15-point underdog. I've seen it at 14 and a half at some spots, 15 and a half at others. The total is set at about 156, 157, depending on where you look. Team USA is a minus 1,200 money line favorite. And if you like France to pull the upset, uh, you can get about seven and a half times your investment at plus 750. The U.S. made mincemeat out of Australia, the toughest team they've seen to date, and they dominated that game 85 to 64, holding the Opals to 36% shooting. France played one of the most exciting games you'll ever see as they defeated neighboring Belgium 81 to 75 in overtime. Emma Miesman, who uh, really should come back to the WNBA, uh, made a late three-pointer, absolutely was a huge force in that game for Belgium, but uh, her country came up short despite her sending the game into overtime with that clutch three uh, and leading the team in scoring, rebounding, and assists. France was able to ride Gabby Williams' early surge in the extra session and then a huge late basket with 39 seconds left after Belgium had clawed within a point. Uh, then France held on and has clinched this spot next to the United States. They will uh, either tie their best finish ever with the silver medal or win gold for the very first time. The United States and France have met in one Olympic final before, back in 2012, and the U.S. won that game 86-50 to 50 in London. Only player remaining on either roster from that game is... Uh, no mystery there. Diana Taurasi was looking for gold medal number six. She started at the beginning of these Olympics, has now come off the bench. She was the only player from the U.S. not to score against the Aussies. But rest assured, I believe she will play in this game against France. And uh, the last meeting between these uh, nations in the Olympics was uh, the 2021 Tokyo Games. And it was a, a, a group play matchup between the U.S. and France. France actually led the United States 22 to 19 after a quarter, but ultimately fell 93 to 82. Uh, the United States dominated points in the paint 46 to 30, and despite losing the rebounding battle, won the game convincingly. Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart combined for 39 points and 14 rebounds in that game, and they've been the driving forces in this Olympic run. Uh, really, the United States has barely been tested uh, they've averaged 89.8 points while surrendering just 71.2 over their five Olympic wins. Uh, Nigeria's played them tough. Belgium played them tough. Uh, both covered spreads against the U.S., but really in the fourth quarter uh, were not within striking distance to where you ever felt the U.S. was in danger of losing. And uh, the Americans will hope to continue that against a French squad that's probably the deepest that they'll run into. Uh, this is... Uh, a squad led by an American, you know, Nevada-born Gabby Williams. She's won two national titles at UConn over her career. Uh, she was the number four overall pick in the WNBA in, in 2018, played for five seasons with a couple of squads, and she's been playing for ASVEL in the French League uh, over the last few years, won uh, the 2022 Euro League with them, was the MVP, so she is uh, legit and uh, one of the more talented players you'll see playing against the United States at these Olympics. Uh, Marie Johannes, who WNBA fans will know from her time 
in uh, the New York with the New York Liberty and the Liberty. I know we're very interested in bringing her back for the stretch run. She opted to play in France this season uh, to better prepare with her uh, French teammates for this Olympic run. We'll see what uh, is next for her. But Johannes is a very talented playmaker and shooter, uh, and she will be a handful for U.S. guards. Uh, whether she comes off the bench or starts, she came off the bench and has done so uh, for most of this tournament, but it really doesn't matter. She's uh, averaging you know, something like 30 minutes per game. You also have to worry uh, about uh, Maria Mbadian, who is a 6'3 center. She's led the team in rebounding uh, four or five games, just won a EuroLeague title with BLMA, and will join Gabby Williams at Fenerbahce in Turkey next season. Uh, Janelle Salwan is... Uh, Another key forward for this team, her kid brother, Tijay Salwan, was just selected number six overall by the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Ileana Rupert is a 6'4 center. Her kid brother, uh, Ryan Rupert, plays for the Portland Trailblazers. So there are a lot of hoopers on this French squad, uh, including the head coach is, is a former player, jean Am Tupin, uh, who led the men's under-20 program for over a decade and took over the women's squad less than three years ago. His kid uh, is somebody that's played in the NBA as well. Um, you got Valeriana Ayayi. Uh, she starts along Gabby Williams on the wing. Her kid brother, Joel Ayayi, played for Gonzaga. Uh, their captain is a 35-year-old Sarah Michelle, skilled shooter. Uh, they've also got Maureen Fauteau, who is a shooter as well. 20-year-old Layla Lake Can. I hope I'm saying that right. She was selected number 10 overall in the most recent WNBA draft uh, in the lottery by the Connecticut Sun. So, again, this French squad is deep. They've done a really nice job throughout this tournament. They lost the game to Australia, uh, but by then they already had Group B clinched. They've averaged 77.4 points while surrendering 66.6 and uh, again, I think their goal in this game is to stay alive uh, through the first three quarters and find a way to rally and win in the end, riding their home court edge, uh, which the United States has to overcome because this is something, the one animal that they have not run into in this uh, tournament is a hostile atmosphere. It will most certainly be hostile and loud if France has a chance to win a gold medal uh, in the fourth quarter of this contest. The United States team total for this game is 85 and a half. France's is at 70 and a half. The uh, total, like I said, is at 156. The free play for this gold medal match from Wager Talk TV on this video is the under. We believe that uh, obviously with the implications involved in France trying to slow down the pace, the United States really not having shot the ball well uh, for this entire Olympic run either in the showcase games uh, or in uh, the uh, group stages. And they shot the ball much better in the knockout stages, over 40% in each contest. But uh, the the uh, mandate from Cheryl Reeve is to ride uh, the easier shots and the points in the paint, the advantage Asia Wilson gives you. Brianna Stewart has done a really nice job. Brittany Griner, when she comes in, they feed her the ball on the post. So the fact that the U.S. has not knocked down shots as consistently as everyone would have liked um, has been mitigated by the fact that they have dominated inside on the glass and in the post. So um, from that standpoint, it takes a, a while to get the ball inside in the paint, the post and repost. So I think uh, this will be a lower scoring game than expected. Um, by that rationale, we also like the unders on a lot of these point scoring props. Brianna Stewart is at 18 and a half, but juiced out at minus 145. She's been in double figures in every single one of these Olympic games, led the U.S. with 16 against Australia. Asian, uh, Asia Wilson's uh, number is at 20 and a half, has been for the last few games. It's a priced out by DraftKings at even money with the under at minus two. Well, minus 130, uh, and that's because, again, probably fewer possessions in this contest. She had just 10 points and eight rebounds against Australia, but still dominated the game with her presence, had four first-half blocks, set the tone. Certainly, she's been the most valuable player for the uh, United States at these Olympics, has been the most valuable player in the WNBA for the last few seasons, even though Stewart won the award last year. Uh, I don't think there's anybody uh, that believes anybody but Asia Wilson will win 
this year's WNBA MVP. But I digress. We've got uh, also numbers on Nafisa Collier, who passed her uh, scoring total last time out. It was at six and a half. Now it's at seven and a half, priced out at plus money, uh, plus 114. She's looked increasingly comfortable, and Reeve is obviously comfortable with her. She coaches her uh, with the Minnesota Lynx in the W. So I think you will see a lot of Collier, a lot of Brianna Stewart, and then the four Las Vegas Aces in this team uh, playing a bunch of minutes. Chelsea Gray continues uh, to be the primary ball handler and playmaker at the point. And then you've got Jackie uh, Young has been tremendous. Uh, I hadn't seen a points number for her, but she has uh, really been the driving force offensively among guards over the last few games. She'll continue to start, and I think we'll see Kelsey Plum play ahead of Sabrina Ionescu off the United States States bench. So I think in a game that probably ends up something like 81 to 69, uh, France slightly covers. The United States wins their eighth gold medal. Diana Taurasi scores and goes out a champion. Uh, and uh, we see the under come in because that's our play here on the Wager Talk TV YouTube channel. Make sure you uh, like and are subscribed so you never miss a video. I know we made a lot of money together on these Olympics, uh, both men and women with uh, the U.S. and other countries. We're going to continue to do that in international soccer uh, and obviously the NFL, college football, MLB, the WNBA. Uh, I'll be covering you on those videos, as will all of our other handicappers who do these for Wager Talk and Sports Memo. We got you covered. All we ask is you like and subscribe, and uh, we'll keep bringing you winners and making money together. And uh, on that note, be sure you're aware that we have great deals going on at both Wager Talk and Sports Memo, so peruse those sites and uh, see what you like most and uh, get signed up with your favorite handicapper. You can follow me at sm.buzz slash TDM. Uh, check out my bio and uh, check out my pick packages. You get free plays there as well. And follow me on Twitter at Mejia De Niro. Once again, we are riding with the under in France, United States, and backing the Americans to win, but not necessarily cover as they go in search for their eighth consecutive gold medal. Have a wonderful profitable weekend. I'm Tony Mejia. Thanks for watching.